A while back, I made this video, and after nearly 200,000 views and 600 comments, it became clear that the majority of human civilization missed the point I was trying to make with this video, uh, which I'm sure is entirely my fault. Yeah. This comment popped up the other day, which I figured I'd just answer with another video. Uh, the comment is essentially asking, uh, after all this time, do you still think that Holly EFI is the best option? No, actually I don't. What? What are you talking about, man? The point I was trying to make previously wasn't that I thought Holly was necessarily the best ECU. It was that Holly is the best ECU for me and for a lot of other people as well. Honestly, I just assume Holly probably doesn't even think that their ECU is the best ECU. Uh, what the hell? Let me explain. In my opinion, there really is no best ECU. Otherwise, there wouldn't be so many ECU manufacturers and ECU models. There would only be one. I'm sure anybody watching this right now that has Motec is about to have a baby. Now what I meant by Holly not thinking that their ECU is the best is because the best ECU is gonna have the most adjustability, the most features, the most CAN integration, and all of that sort of stuff, which typically makes it extremely difficult to learn how to use it and also very expensive. I don't like this shit. So many different ECU manufacturers exist because they're all targeting their own specific things that make them the best option for those specific needs. You could argue a Lamborghini is a better vehicle than a Ford F-150, but if you need to pick up a bunch of building supplies, the Lambo isn't the best option anymore, and that kind of goes for ECUs. If you need one specific thing and the ECU doesn't do that, then it's not gonna be the best option for you, and if you don't need specific things, it doesn't make that much sense to pay for them and add all of that complexity to the ECU if you just need something basic. And on top of all that, there's just so much just preference. From a comparison standpoint, they're very similar, yet some guys go and get Chevy Camaro tattoos and others get tattoos of Ford Mustangs. And just like cars, guys will choose an ECU that they like and they will stick to it until the day that they die. Also, just like all other things in life, each system tends to have its pros and its cons. First example that kind of comes to my mind is that everybody with fuel tech, I'll let you know that their traction control is included and it's not a paid upgrade like it is for Holly. Uh, but somehow the fuel tech guys ignore the fact that uh, Holly's wideband is built in and it's not an add-on like it is with the fuel tech. Holly's uh, drive-by-wire control is free and most other ECUs will actually have drive-by-wire as a paid upgrade. And uh, you know, nearly every ECU out there is gonna have better knock control than Holly. Uh, I could go on and, you know, these kind of comparisons for hours. With the different models of ECUs that Holly has, it's very clear that they're targeting customers who are you know, potentially absolute beginners with EFI to those who want a capable ECU, but still want it to be relatively straightforward to use. You don't have to know how to program spaceships in order to get your car to start for the first time. So if you meet any of that criteria, then Holly very well may be the best ECU for you. All right, that's a bit. But I wouldn't necessarily say that that means that it makes it the best overall ECU. The staggering number of cars running Holly EFI shows that their target market is significantly larger than it is for those looking to buy more complex and more expensive systems. Could you imagine if you told somebody with a Holly Sniper that they had to write their own firmware and then build an entire engine harness from scratch along with adding 30,000 fully customizable tables? the sales would immediately go down to exactly zero. Simple, affordable, and easy to use is the best option for a much larger number of people it's a good combination. than it is for those looking for a more capable, but more complex, harder to use, harder to learn, and much more expensive system. And just so I'm, I'm clear, uh, I'm not trying to talk anybody into using Holly or anything like that. Uh, I don't even sell Holly. And kind of to prove that point, they actually closed my dealer account for not selling enough stuff. So I don't care what you buy, just kind of trying to help those out that maybe are on the fence and trying to figure out which system that they want. I've had great luck with Holly over the years, but I also work on stuff that is very compatible with Holly. So again, for me and my customers, it works out great. So this is one of my personal cars. I installed a Holly Dominator ECU into this car. And although there is fancier stuff out there, it does everything that I need it to do. And uh, it has enough inputs and outputs and uh, I'll never have to worry about running out of those. As far as I'm aware, I think the Dominator ECU has the most inputs and outputs of any ECU I've ever come across without having to add any additional boxes or anything like that. So that seems to set the Dominator apart from a lot of other options out there. But anyways, uh, I put Holly in this car specifically for the purpose of training others how to use their Holly EFI systems. So even though this thing's had <laughs> Holly installed in it,
it for probably every bit of a year now. Uh, I've actually only driven this car once uh, other than on the dyno. So looking back, I probably should have bought some $100 shitbox car for that instead. But uh, either way, once we get through uh, hundreds and hundreds of different training videos, then we'll be able to take this thing out and have some fun with it. As it sits right now, it's just a naturally aspirated LS2. And again, once I can get it out of the shop here, uh, I'll take it home and we'll put a couple of turbos on it and that'll make it a whole lot more fun. Now, if this car was one year newer, everything in this car, you know, on the factory side of things would all be through the Porsche CAN bus. And using Holly in this car actually wouldn't be an option if you wanted any of the rest of the car to work. So when looking for one of these things, I made sure to pick up a 99 uh, rather than a 2000 plus, uh, just so that I could put, you know, essentially whatever ECU in here I wanted and everything's worked out great. Now, just for sake of conversation, uh, a couple of other cars that I have been eyeballing for a while for myself uh, would actually end up with non Holly ECUs in them if I ever decide to pull the trigger on one. So I'm not married to Holly. I just use it when it makes the most sense. So again, if this was a CAN bus car, then we'd have to use a different ECU that has that type of compatibility. So Holly's definitely not the best solution for all applications. So if I think there is arguably better systems out there, why do I do so much with Holly? There's a lot of reasons actually. The primary reason is there's just so much of it. I tuned literally one car with Holly EFI and basically overnight we essentially turned into a Holly EFI shop, kind of almost accidentally. And considering I feed my family by tuning cars, it makes a lot of sense to me to choose a system that has a lot of potential customers. I've been in situations in the past trying to use other ECUs that weren't very popular and it was kind of like pulling teeth trying to get customers because nobody even knew about the system so I wasn't exactly the best choice. Now a lot of this is because of this YouTube channel and I think location has a lot to do with it as well but I probably get contacted something crazy like 300 to 1 uh, for you know Holly EFI cars versus other ECUs when people are looking to have their stuff tuned. That's crazy. Kind of the next most popular things would be HP tuners. Uh, obviously there's a zillion factory ECU cars. That's not really my favorite kind of stuff to do. Uh, then Honda, because we used to do tons and tons of Hondas back in the day. And then probably followed by fuel tech. And then past that, there just isn't much interest in anything specifically. Get some people looking for Motec stuff every now and then. ECU masters here and there, next to nothing for Pro EFI. A little bit of Mega Squirt. And what is a little bit surprising to me is there isn't a whole lot of interest in the, the Haltech, Haltech. Somebody jumped down my shit because I call it Haltech. Who gives a shit? Uh, in another video, the internet's a crazy place. But I, again, I don't know if it's just a location thing, but there's just not a whole lot of popularity with that here. And when people do ask about it, it's almost always like the older import plug and play stuff, like the, you know, the early like R32 GTRs. Get next to nothing for any of the newer systems. So I guess part of what I'm getting at here is, you know, everybody's leaving all these comments trying to convince me why whatever ECU it is that they like is better than Holly. And uh, I'm not arguing with you. If you use a different ECU and it has the features and the software and everything that you like, then that's just fine. But I guess ultimately I'm kind of explaining why Holly is the best choice for me, best choice for a lot of my customers. And as long as everyone's happy, that's kind of all that really should matter, right? You cannot give me any advice. Another great part about Holly being so popular is that it's so readily available. Uh, if I needed to, you know, borrow a Holly ECU uh, for, you know, to test something or whatever the case may be, I could probably have 10 different ECUs dropped off here almost immediately. Uh, or I could get what I needed from so many different, you know, places. Hell, you can even buy Holly stuff on Amazon, which actually sucks for the dealers, but uh, it's actually great when you in a pinch and you need something in a hurry. Another thing that really sets Holly apart, in my opinion, is the ability to find the information that you need. Uh, some of these ECUs, everything's just top secret and you can't find anything. That can get super frustrating. Now, some other manufacturers may have uh, better tech support if you pick up the phone and call, but especially, you know, given the time of the day or whatever else it is, you're not always gonna have that option. But I feel like everybody knows somebody else or multiple people that are using Holly. So usually you can talk to other Holly users uh, which I think is a really big help. 
As far as finding information, Holly offers, I think it's like a week long uh, in-person training, which is really cool. I personally have a Holly online training course and uh, there's probably far more information just posted online about Holly specifically than most any other ECU manufacturers, you know, at least from what I've personally seen. Talking on the phone is one of the things I dread most in life. So if I can get the information that I need just by searching on the internet or, you know, texting a friend or something like that, rather than having to hold a stupid phone to my face, I'm all for it. Early on, one of the things that made me kind of put two and two together that Holly I thought was gonna be a good idea to get familiar with for my business is that between the Sniper, the Terminator X, and the HP and Dominator ECUs, uh, there's literally a system for all budgets and all style of builds. And one thing I really like is that they made all three of the different software kind of versions or whatever you wanna call that are very, very similar. So if you can tune one of those three systems, uh, you're familiar enough to tune all three. As there were some of the other ECU manufacturers out there, they'll have their different kind of budget line of ECUs with their own software. And, you know, sometimes it's, they're not even similar at all. So it really, even though it's the same brand, it feels like you're having to learn two, two different systems altogether, which is kind of annoying. The initial setup with Holly is typically easy and straightforward. Um, even though I'm not a huge fan of the touchscreen thing and the wizard setup, uh, I do see it as a you know a massive advantage that most end users are able to at least you know plug that thing in, answer a couple of questions on that screen, and at least get the cars to start up and you know check for leaks and you know get them running for the first time to make sure that they're actually ready to go to the dyno and get tuned. Uh, there's nothing worse than somebody shows up with a car that's never started and you know you go to turn the key for the first time and you, you realize that you know the thing's not even capable of starting so it's a terrible way to spend the day on the dyno. Another thing that I really like about Holly is that the ECU is logging all of the different channels all of the time and you can just download a data log, open it up, and view it in a way that makes sense. And if you wanna change your channels around or your graphs around or anything like that, it, you can do it in 30 seconds. That feels like with some of these other ECUs, but the first time you use it, you gotta spend eight hours setting up the data logger before you can even use it. And they're not logging all of the different channels, so if there's some thing that's named something stupid and you're not familiar with it, you might not have known to click on that to actually log that channel. So then when there's a problem, you. It, it's not there, you didn't log it, so you know that's, that channel's not gonna be in the actual log that you downloaded. So now you gotta go try and recreate the problem, which isn't always an option. So uh, the fact that all of the information is in every single data log every single time, uh, I really like that feature a lot. You understand what I'm saying? The downside being if you're logging at a you know high sample rate with a Dominator ECU, it can take you 45 hours to actually download the data log from the ECU. So uh, it's like everything is a give and a take. So probably like a year ago, uh, I filmed a video comparing Holly EFI to FuelTech. And uh, if that's something that you're interested in seeing, leave a comment below and let me know. And if there's enough interest in it, I'll finish editing it. That video is on the longer side. So I got about halfway through editing it and kind of lost interest and figured I'd come back to it and I never have. Anyways, if you're interested in seeing more Holly EFI type of videos, uh, click on one of these videos on the screen now.